my first graders. So today we're gonna get back our cupcakes and we get to see how they look after they've come out of the kiln. Now they're still very, very fragile. They could break and chip. So we wanna make sure that they're not too close to the edge of the table. Now today we're gonna be making an observational drawing. What is an observational drawing? It's when we draw what we see in front of us. So to get started, you're gonna put your top on your cupcake. Then you're going to get a piece of paper. You're gonna write your name and your art code. And then you're gonna turn it over. Now we wanna hold our paper vertical because that's how our cupcake looks. And we wanna make sure that we fit the whole cupcake in. So I'm just gonna move this back a little bit so we can see everything. There we go. So to get started, I wanna make sure that I draw the entire cupcake on this paper and that I don't have a lot of extra space. So I'm gonna start by doing the bottom part. So I'm gonna do a diagonal line because if I use my pencil, I see that this is not straight. It kind of curves in. And then this curves out, something like that. And then this is also a diagonal line. And then I'm going to curve that line across. So again, I have two diagonal lines, a curved line on the bottom and a curved line on the top. You can figure out the direction that the lines are going in by using your finger or pencil to kind of trace in the air. Now to do the top part, instead of just drawing the whole thing, I'm gonna kind of build it like I did with the coil. So I'm gonna curve the edges like that, and then I'm gonna look at my cupcake. Maybe that comes up a little more. I'm gonna draw very lightly. Then I'm gonna do the next one that comes in a little bit more, and then it comes down like that. And then it curves, and then I can count one, two, three, four, five, with a little bit of six on top. So I wanna make sure that I draw all of those. So this is gonna be three curves on the edges, four, and then I have this little five that it comes in a little bit more. And this comes up a little bit more. So you might have to erase as you're going, just like I did, because I realized this should really come in more. And then I have this little cherry part on top. So once you're done drawing everything in pencil, then you're going to raise your hand. If I think that you're done, you will be able to get a Sharpie. Now I realize I forgot to draw these lines in from the wrapper. So some of those are on a diagonal, some are more straight in the middle, and some are on a diagonal again. I also have some circles that are coming off of the edge, some that are on the edge. So I'm gonna do my best to kind of count three and look at where I did my sprinkles. This looks like it's gonna be red. Now I think I'm ready to outline with the Sharpie. outlining everything we're not going to color anything in with the sharpie we're just outlining then you're going to erase be very careful though when you're erasing you might even want to take this off so it doesn't fall off from shaking the table we're going to erase all the lines underneath and then the last step is going to be getting some watercolors to paint so once you're done erasing you can put that back on make sure that it's sturdy now if i have something that's white i can just leave it white so i'm going to leave this part white and I'm just gonna start by painting the wrapper. Now, whenever I use watercolor, I need a little bit of water and just a little bit of paint. I don't need to keep turning it and pushing it into the watercolors because that's how it will um, get used up and it will damage the watercolors. I'm gonna stay in my lines. I could always add a little bit of water to spread it out. And then when I'm doing smaller shapes, I might want to switch to a smaller brush. I could dry my brush if I need to on the sponge. And now I'm just going to add in the red spots. Once you're all done painting, you can put your cup of water and paintbrushes 
in the sink. We'll put these back where we found them and then our artwork is going to go in the dry rack. Don't turn it over because some parts might still be wet. You want to keep it flat and I can help you put it in the dry rack. Have fun making your observational painting.